Hey guys, how's it going? Well, today I think I want to take a look at this um, Broadway Limited Santa Fe Hudson, known as the Blue Goose. Number 3460. Let's look at the box. This is part number 7355, which is the uh, Blue Goose 1951-1953 appearance with Paragon 4 sound DC, DCC, smoke, and HO scale. Well, here we go. Got the uh, Santa Fe Blue Goose from Broadway Limited. Brass hybrid in HO scale on the turntable. Okay, lazy Susan. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, this guy showed up on the doorstep the other day. It was a pre-order. Uh, I haven't had time to open the box or check it out. I finally did today. And I'm impressed. The details are uh, pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, so hopefully you can see some of those details. Um, there we go. So looking pretty good. Rivet detail is pretty amazing. This lighting really helps it pop. We've got uh, vents up here. Kinds of piping, throttle linkage. Looks like a chain. Oh, look at that! It actually is a chain. Look at this. Uh, I got the whistle. Class lights look like they may be jewels. Got a nice handrail detail going back to the cab. Side rods look good. Drivers look just amazing. Nice paint job. Really nice. Going around here, what do we got? All kinds of uh, steam plumbing back here. We've got, looks like brakes on the uh, rear truck. Um, plumbing for blow off valves or what have you down here. There's another one right there. We have vents up here. This area I believe is the pressure relief valves. There's actually vents on the other side. We'll check them out when we get there. Uh, the crew figures. There is a light here. I'm going to assume that's a rearward facing light for when they're in reverse. Um, that's all I can come up with on that. I'll have to do some research. We've got uh, the deck plate here. Let's go up so we can see the top of the tender here as we spin it around. Some good detail up there with uh, brackets here holding the fairing. back we have a red light so sort of an end of train light I'm assuming uh, air hoses Katie style coupler good rivet detail again just everywhere the rivets really pop with this paint another view of the the brackets for the fairing up top. We got toolboxes. We've got access hatches for oil and water, plumbing. This looks like uh, some sort of tool they would use to open the hatches. We have a crew figure here. There's our deck plate again. And coming around. More of the same on this side. Checking out that uh, rivet detail, looking good. Top, there's our pressure relief valves, I'm assuming. Don't know what's under here. Maybe the dynamo. Yeah, I bet the dynamo is under there, so it needs, uh, needs to be able to vent. Yeah, we got a grab rail there. We got number plates on this side. Another chain here, which is an actual chain. Look at that. Uh, that rivet detail, man, just keeps screaming at me. Popping like crazy. We have the uh, the stack here in the raised position, uh, which has uh, brought about some discussions on forums and groups. Some people don't like it. Um, some people don't care. I'm in the don't care group. 
Uh, obviously, when the train was underway, that was up. And, you know, should they have maybe allowed us to pop it off and pop on a one in the lower position? Eh, maybe for the price. I'm going to say yes, they probably should have. But they did not. So that's that. I was going to come back here to look at this sunshade here on the side. That's, that's pretty decent detail and an arm pad. Look at that. Be kind of cool if he had his arm on it. I'm assuming that's like a wing window on an old car. You could flip it out and uh, deflect the wind around the window. Wind around the window. Let's go back to this lighting here. There we go. And check out these drivers again. Man, the paint just looks so good. Okay, coming around here. Our jeweled marker lights, class lights, whatever you might want to call them. That rivet, rivet detail in the front. We have steps here. These little details tend to get broken off on plastic models. So hopefully they um, live longer on this brass model. And coming around back to the right side. We're back to the original starting point of the video of the review here we have another chain same chain as before not another chain uh the whistle we have the actually looks like the actuating arm for the whistle um i think the idea of this vented uh area here was to allow air to go into a tunnel here and hit the shorter stack and to be deflected up here in an attempt to deflect all the smoke a little higher. I know some designs had that and it worked on some designs, but maybe it didn't work so well on the Blue Goose and they ended up installing uh, an extendable stack or maybe it came that way from the beginning. I don't know. Not a huge Blue Goose uh, history buff. I just like it. It looks great. It's cool to see things, locomotives that, you know, aren't black. Color's cool. Anyway, um, that wraps up the close-up detail portion. That, um, let's flip her on her side and take a look at the bottom. That's always fun. Okay, well, we tip the goose. Goose tipping. What do we have here? So, looks like we have a standard uh, weighted front pilot. Here's the six driver arrangement. The traction tires are on the back too. Um, you can see here's the on off switch for the smoke, the hard switch, and the rear driver, or rear driver, sorry, the rear truck, spring loaded, kind of just floating along there the way it should be. Shouldn't have probably too much down pressure, otherwise, uh, that could cause the remove weight from the drivers and cause traction issues. Moving on back here, we have two positions for the um, drawbar. Um, if you have larger radius, you can run the tighter position. If you have tighter radiuses, uh, you can run the, the ex extended position here, which uh, allows the tender to turn and not make contact with the uh, locomotive on tighter turns. Here are, you can see the pickups, and the tender trucks, front and left back speaker holes and looks like a standard KD style coupler box and coupler and that about does it for the bottom of the blue goose let's check coupler height okay it looks like we're all on the track Scoot back here. Let's get back to that coupler and see where we are. Looks pretty close. And obviously no coupler on the front, so the rear one's all we'll check. Okay, before we get started in applying power to this guy, I'm going to give the little the Blue Goose a little squirt. I use one of these so I can feel around so I can get past right there. 
get past the heating element and just put the soil right in the reservoir where it belongs. That should do it. Okay, I forgot to show you the extra paraphernalia in the box. There's some sort of bracket here. I'll have to look and see where that goes with a the screw. There's a side rod wrench and a couple of spare traction tires. Um, I just had this on JMRI. My JMRI is not updated, so I had to tell it it was a Paragon 3. Um, but anyway, I set the address for 3460, and I lowered the volume because these things are super loud from the factory. Let's go ahead and see if we can get it to start up. The extended start up here. Okay, so there's that light after the cab. And we have lights on the front. And number lights do light up. Class lights are jewels. Okay, we have a cab light. Let's see, uh, I don't think the red light's gonna be directional. The reverse, no light, so. It's probably an emergency stoplight. Let's try that. Nope. I'm not sure what's going on here. I did go into emergency stoplight. All right, let's, uh, let's try uh, the whistle here. This thing is still very loud. I have to play with that volume a little bit more. Put light off. And headlight on. Dynamo back on. So that is considered a deck light. And you can turn it off with F4. Supposedly, doesn't seem to be working for me. Interesting. Number board lighting is F5. Silly me, I was using pro mode. I forgot about that, Paragon 4. You've got standard DCC operations mode and pro mode. So let's see what we can do using the correct instructions. So F3 was coupler sounds in standard mode. And F4 was air pumps. F5 should be blowdown. Yeah. F6, water fill. So F20 is going to be the function button to turn off the tinder light. Let's see if that works.
I'm not seeing that working, so I'm going to have to check that mapping on that. Anyway, let's move along here. Uh, we were at Waterfill, smoke, F7 is smoke on off, F8, master volume, mute, F9, typical, BLI startup, F10's oil injector, F11, water injector, F12, brake set, then we have the various sounds, station sounds, yard radio chatter, maintenance chatter, radio check chatter, deck light on, off. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. That's supposed to be F-18. Let's try that. Nope. No luck. Oh, there we go. Helps to press the right button. So, function 18 turns that light on off. Yep, back on. Okay. Moving down here. F-19's crew chatter. So F-20 is the tender light, which I'm assuming is that guy. Yep, and it's on right now. So let's see if we can turn that off with F-20. No luck? Yep, there it goes. Okay, we'll get it figured out. Um, F-21 is lumber mill sounds. F-22 is toggle between the whistles. Let's do that. Let's see what the other whistle sounds like. Not bad. Loud. Um, F-23 is track sounds. Number board lights, F-24. Yep. Okay. Getting there with F twenty five's long whistle. Let's try that. That's pretty cool. And F26 is macro playback. F27 is record macro. F28 is brake squeal. So those are all your functions in DC standard mode. Let's see some speed control here. So I'm gonna go with speed steps of 128. We are in forward. Let's press speed step one. Step two, three, four, speed step five of 128. We're getting some smoke now. And let's move back forward. Speed step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's switch over to 28 speed steps. Speed step one of 28. Two, three, four. And speed step one of 28 going forward. One, two, Three, four, five, six, and we should probably stop. Back up a little bit. And you know, 
just for the heck of it. Let's play that long whistle again because that was actually pretty cool. Let's turn off the deck light before we move to the uh, layout. There's that. And let's see, let's go ahead and turn the tinder light back on. And that was F20. And I'm going to turn the volume down before we head out to the layout. See if we can find some Santa Fe cars. I probably don't have the right passenger cars. But I do have some green Santa Fe cars. We'll string them up behind here and see how she goes. Well, here goes nothing. Had to clear the rails. Had a long freight train on the main line. So, it took a few seconds, but you didn't even realize it. So, let's see if we can get a start up here. Sounds like it. So it's blowing the smoke around. A little warm out today.
Okay, let's try a pull test here. Let's see what we get. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Let's try that again. You reset this. Okay, here we go. It is pulling really hard. That's over a pound. Good Lord. Yeah, we're going to stop right there. One pound, 1 1.9 ounces. That's insane. Well, that concludes the video of my review of the um, Broadway Limited Blue Goose. Um, and wow, that pulling power. If I wouldn't have seen that with my own eyes, I don't think I'd believe it. Over a pound. One pound, 1 1.8 ounces. That's a record amongst all my locomotives. I think my big boys do right at 13. This one, pretty amazing. It's almost like you're wondering what they have in store as far as maybe they're going to make some cars to pull behind this thing and they might be a little heavy. I don't know. Anyway, um, another flawless performance by a BLI locomotive on my layout. No complaints at all. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you can. And I'll see you in the next video.